why would someone volunteer to jump out of an airplane <laughs> into enemy fire? And that just kind of is mind-boggling to me. And uh, so I wanted to look back at the history of what created men like my dad, and he certainly wasn't alone, uh, and his brothers and a lot of maybe your relatives, ancestors, uh, who did this kind of thing as well. So these are the characters in, in my book, and even though they're family members, they're, uh, I think there is a broader representation in that they represent a, a, this culture, our American culture at that time. They weren't very different than other people who lived, worked, um, and went to war. And uh, the three fellows at the bottom, I'll point to these guys, Those were the three boys that went to war. You can see from the pictures here, two of them ended up married, and I'm the product of one of them, but one of them never did. So one of them never made it back from World War II. What really got me started writing um, was this newspaper article. So back in um, 1989, this newspaper article floated around the country and the, the, the world. It started, it was from Leicester, uh, England, which is just outside of Corn. It's a nearby city to Corn, England, where all the World War II paratroopers were stationed, and Air Force uh, were stationed, Army Air Force were stationed. Um, someone had dropped off a canister of film just before D-Day and never went back and picked it up. In 1989, the owner of the chemist shop, a drugstore, um, died, and his son came to clean out the store. And what he found there was a canister of film from 1940 that had not ever been developed. So he developed the film. And those pictures became a big deal in Leicester, England in 1989 because they were all pictures of these fellas just, getting, just before they were jumped right before they jumped, lined up in front of planes, doing actually D-Day exercises. So there, were, there was more than one D-Day uh, before they actually jumped on the D-Day. So they were doing exercises, preparing for the day, and the newspaper article was finally sent to my dad, who said, ah, oh, I took those pictures. <laughs> uh, he told me the story of, you know, going to drop off the pictures at the chemist shop, and expecting, they never knew when they were gonna be uh, set off, and he expected to be able to go get those pictures and never did. So he was quite surprised when somebody sent him this newspaper article. And when I went to um, England, and this was in 2004 is when I started this project, I went to England, I had this newspaper article in my hand. And I thought, well, I'm going to find the original pictures, because the, this is faded, you know, I can't see these pictures very well, it's an old newspaper, maybe I can at least get a copy of the original newspaper from the Leicester Mercury in Leicester, England. So I went there and, and my travel plans didn't really allow me to, to get to the Leicester Mercury because they were closed and I had a taxi driver that drove me to Corn. And I found the only drugstore in Corn, England. There's only one of them. And I went in and there was a fellow working there and I had the newspaper article in my hand and I said I'm you know, looking for my dad's photographs that he took just before D-Day. And he said, never heard of it. Don't know what you're talking about. I was really disappointed. And I went out into the rain with the taxi driver behind me, who was really into the story by then. The taxi driver was kind of encouraging me. And I said, well, I'll buy you a beer. And we went up to the White Horse Inn, which is a, a tavern on the corner that had been there for a very long time, probably way longer than since World War II, maybe hundreds of years. We went into the White Horse Inn, and, the taxi driver said, well, go ask the bartender. Go ask her. I said, she's 20 years old. What is she going to know about <laughs> World War II? He said, you should go ask her. Go ask her. So I did. I took my newspaper article. And I said, excuse me. I'm here looking for my dad's pictures that he took just before World War II. And I started the newspaper article. I started to tell her the story. She interrupted me, and she said, you need to speak with Ian. I, OK. And she took me over to meet Ian. And Ian was standing with some other fellas, hoisting a beer, which I think is a national pastime in England, I'm not sure. Um, and I told him the story and showed him the newspaper article, and I didn't get very far. 
He grabbed me by the elbow and he steered me around the corner and he pointed up at the wall and there on the wall is my dad smiling down at me and all the pictures that were taken. And the weirdest part of the story is he just bought this bar. I was there in November. He bought the bar in April. In April when he got the bar, the pictures were in a box in the attic. But he had a bunch of vets coming in and he decided to get them all matted and framed. And there were, there were actually two big um, frames filled with these pictures from that my dad had taken in World War II. Needless to say, I was really pleased and shocked. <laughs> and since then, um, it, it was the start to my book and I had my story to begin with, which is the one I just told you. He was captured um, and escaped five times. One of them was actually a DP camp, displaced personnel camp run by the Soviets, by the Russians, but he escaped from it too. He had to break back in so that they would send him home. 